Okay, so um, yeah, as we start, we look at First Peter chapter two, and um, this is um, uh, verses uh, twelve onwards, right? Having your conduct honorable among the Gentiles, that when they speak against you as evil doers, they may by your good works, which they observe, glorify God in the day of the visitation. Therefore, submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether to the king as supreme or to governors as those who are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of those who do good. For this is the will of God, that by doing good, you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men as free yet not using liberty as a cloak for vice, but as bond servants of God. Honor all people, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the king. So here, uh, Peter is laying down some instructions for the believers um, in, uh, in their relationship with the government, those in authority, uh, and specifically he's talking about the earthly rule, like whether it's kings or governors or whoever it is. So he's saying, first of all, let your conduct be honorable. Like, let your behavior be honorable. It doesn't matter, you know, you might be believing the best of things, but how, how is your behavior among the Gentiles, right? Then it says, this is the will of God, that by doing good, you will put to shame the ignorance. Right? So this doing good is something, he says, this is, this is the will of God. You know, this is God's will, this is God's desire for you, that by doing good, you will put to shame the ignorance of um, foolish men. Like in the sense, um, they might persecute, they might say all kinds of things against you, but when you continue in doing good, right, um, then you will actually silence them, right? Put to it says in verse fifteen, they will silence the, put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. Okay, so so the thing of um, conducting ourselves honorably, you know, and I, I just want to say as as leaders, right, as leaders, um, because. We might behave a certain way with fellow believers, saying that, okay, you know, with believers, I'm going to honorable, you know, uh, let's sometimes we say, no, they, you know, they, they are Christians. So we will, you know, we will, we will do our best for them. We will do our, you know, we will extend courtesy, we will honor, etc., because they are believers. Then we might, we look down on others, you know, we look down on Gentiles, they are non believers. And then we, you know, we sometimes we do not extend the same courtesies. We don't extend the same, you know, honor and so on. But here we see something else in in, in practice. That uh, Peter says that by doing good, you know, by keeping to the rules and regulations of the land, the law of the land, by doing good, you will actually silence their ignorance. By doing good, you will, they, you will be because of your good actions, you will actually put to shame. Right. So something for us to. Uh, remember, especially as leaders, you know, people whom God appoints as leaders, we need to be doubly careful about this, right? Okay, let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this exhortation that, Lord, you've called us, Lord, as believers, Lord, as, as your disciples, Lord, um, to keep to, to obey the rules and regulations, the law of the land. And not only that, but of, you've also, Lord, um, exhorting us to do good. You're exhorting us, Lord, to live honorably so that, Lord, by the good deeds, Father God, that the silent, that we will be put to shame or silence the ignorance of foolish men. God. Father, we pray that we will always remember this, that we will live honorably, not only among believers, but also among those who do not know you, Father God, and especially among those who do not know you as Lord and Savior. Yes, Lord, enable us to do this. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. Okay, so we've been looking at the second, um, you know, section. Sorry. Um, yeah, about winning with people, right? Winning with others, winning with people. And so uh, in that, we looked at the first one, which is getting ready to relate to people. Right. There are some adjustments that we need to make. There are certain things that we need to um, perspectives uh, that we need to change in order to get in, get ready to relate to people. Okay. In, in the same thing, 
the second one which will actually help us is um, again we're going to, going to look at certain principles right um, which will help us the to focus on others to be other focused okay um so you know i'm sure you've done all of us have done this let's say there is a group picture okay and i just take a selfie i take a group picture and i send it to all of you okay so when you look at the picture what are you going to focus on first exactly that's the thing you know first first of all you know it's it's a natural thing we want to see how we are we won't look at you know how the other people are but we want to see okay it's a picture which includes me so i naturally go and see oh and then we say oh my hair is looking like this or i close my eyes or you know so we zoom in onto us okay and that's something um, that we grow up with right we want what's in it for me okay and it's uh, it, it's not something that is bad but the thing is in philippians chapter 2 right we've seen that verse 3 and 4 it says let each one of you not uh, look look out not only for his own interest but also for the interest of others right let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit so if we want to win with people right uh, if we want um, our team to win and ourselves to win right? when as we are leading people the thing is we need to be focused others focused okay because we are leading others we need to be others focused okay to help with that here are some principles okay one is the big picture principle that is the same thing what we saw just now no you uh, we need to understand that this world this life just not revolve around us but there are others also right the, um, there is a uh, you know this whole thing of you know we think that okay the whole world revolves around me you know we get up thinking about ourselves how can i you know what's in it for me what what do i need to do etc right and it's it's quite natural right but we need to understand that uh we cannot be self centered all the time right we need to take care of other, uh, ourselves yes right we need to take care of our needs we need to make sure that we um, you know in terms of our health and nourishment and all those things we need to take care of ourselves we need to guard protect ourselves you know so, so if you look at a lot of uh, uh things we that we learn about discipleship it is focused on us right you know how do i grow in faith how do i you know um, you know build myself in the lord how you know uh, you know how much how do i protect myself from temptation guard myself and it's actually focused on us right we say okay god what is your plan for me right what is your will for me and then so so there's nothing bad about it it's good but at the same time you know what we do is when it comes to relating to people we realize that hey, we are too focused on us right and i think um, you know sometimes uh, i think the thing that i'm i'm sure you're learning about marriage and family like you see that marriage is a cure huh over already yeah i know sorry sir you mentioned last class itself so that is the cure you know where all this has to die in order for things to work and thrive right for the relationship to work so we we need to esteem others better than ourselves okay and it's a sign of maturity right so um when we fail to see things like that when we fail to consider others then it becomes a problem okay so outward focus focusing on others taking lo- looking at okay what do others need like this is my need but what do others need now it's a shift in perspective right um as believer as christian leaders you know as maybe maybe pastors and this thing we we think about okay god has given this for the people right see i need to take them from here to there i need to build them up etc but also we need to consider where are people right now right where are people right now in their journey with god at what level of faith are they at what level of maturity are they at you know and that will help us to be even more effective right as leaders that will help us to be even more effective otherwise we will be blind to the fact that okay 
people are at one stage and we are trying to do something like for example um, there was this there were two boys who studied here apc and um, uh, bible college and uh, it was uh, you know some some years back you know, early batches so so uh, one of them was a drummer the other guy um, used to play guitar and lead worship and so on so they, they come from you know chennai area uh, somewhere you know uh, uh, suburban chennai so uh, they they came here they learned all the hill song and bethel and all the songs and everything and and they wanted to take that back to the church and i said uh, you know we want to you know we want to teach them these are songs we want to teach them all this and then they went and then they they came back after one summer vacation they came back and they were very disappointed you know pastor they are all dead nobody's moving we we played you know one way and uh, hill song and all that they are all you know they're not they, even the young people they are not uh, the thing at all they're such a waste you know these people are and, and all that then then i asked them you know what are the songs what is the language first of all what are the language that they are comfortable with they are all tamil speaking only pastor yeah, but we are trying to teach them new songs you know but uh, but this, you know, do they understand this you know, some of them yeah some of them do some of, most of them don't but these are good songs no they need to when when we had that conversation he said hey do you just start with where where people are you know what do they understand what kind of music do they uh, do they listen to what kind of music are they able to use in order to connect with god right same thing happened when we went to this um, place called siliguri we went there and um, we had to do an you know like a mission trip similar to something that happened in hyderabad so we had to go there and so we went prepared with hindi hindi songs and uh, we went with uh, you know some uh, like worship team we had all these hindi songs but it was all translated from english into hindi you know um some of these popular songs those days so we went to there and then we saw and then nobody's moving nobody's responding right we are just putting all our energy and this thing and and, and we are we thinking we're singing hindi and uh, you know we sing all these songs you know how how is it then there was one group which came okay so uh, which came from calcutta i think they came and then they they did bengali songs okay they say sang in bengali and they were not sophisticated you know kind of you know sophisticated i'm just using the word sophisticated in the sense they were not kind of contemporary modern songs but they were you know very simple folk kind of beat right and you should see the same crowd which was sleepy yawning same crowd is jumping and i'm seeing like some of the older folks dancing i'm saying oh you know this uncle this aunty and all like they 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 had their eyes closed they were just you know not responding but now they are moving dancing and so then we really say we need to start where people are right we can't say okay you know this is who i am this is what i am and then you know we are doing this in bangalore and then you know go with the same kind genre of worship music right and then we realize things need to change this is this is not working at all right so so also when we are leading you know leading people sometimes we think hey this this person is very slow this person is you know it's not um, it's not measuring up find out might find out whether it's um, at it whether it's a matter of skill or it's a matter of attitude right okay so focus on others okay so so uh, so what you're saying is okay um, the big picture principle that it's not just about me it's not about even my ministry but it's about others people right then the second one is the exchange principle okay so it means that in order to understand others we see things from their viewpoint okay i remember the first time um we had public speaking in our school okay first time so the teacher said okay i'm going to give you it was just like our homiletics preaching the thing you know you pick a topic and then you just go and speak so the teacher said um, okay i'll give you some time to prepare you you know uh, you go and then you need to Uh, speak so then i re- uh, all of us uh, you know prepared and we went forward and i couldn't say anything right i'm standing in front of the class and i couldn't say anything because there were some 50 students who were looking at me 50 pairs of eyes looking at me 
I'm so used to seeing one one person on just the teacher, right? That was my view. Now I'm seeing like 50 people, including the teacher, you know, 51, and they're all looking at me. So the view from the front of the class was so totally different from the back of the class where I sat, and no words came out. My mouth became dry, and I was sweating, and somehow I managed to say some things, and then, so then I realized that the view is totally different. I didn't prepare for that. Okay, So the exchange principle is, what is the view from where they are? Okay. So I'm just saying view for a you know physical view, but then how do they see things? Right? How do they see you? Right? What is their perspective when they come to church or work or ministry or you know in your team? What is their perspective? What is their viewpoint? How do they see it? Right? We need to understand that, right? Um, in order to in order to help, in order to lead better, in order to relate to people better, right? So Romans 12.10 says, be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love in honor, giving preference to one another, okay? to see their perspective or viewpoint. Now, you know, you might have questions, you know, do I always have to do, do this? What about things that we need to get done? Right? We need to get done, you know, how can, how can I always just be looking at their perspective and get their viewpoint? So yes, there is something, there is a goal, there is a vision that we need to achieve, but if we do not set right things from their perspective, it could be some minor things. You know, they, it could be a, it could be a wrong understanding. It could be you know some challenges that they're going through. But if we do not exchange places in order to see where the other person is, then we cannot lead well. And we need to have that you know have that skill. Okay, why is that person saying this? You know, as a you know, maybe even Bible, in Bible college. You know, as a student, you know, what what is the student going through? Right? What are the challenges? So that we can make changes. So that we can, you know, we may not be able to make a whole lot of changes, but some things we can, and we need to do that, right? Okay. So that's the exchange principle. The third thing that will help us to be other focus is the learning principle. Okay. So what is that? The learning principle is simply this: that you know, there are. I don't have everything. I don't have all the knowledge. I don't have all the skill. I can learn something from others. Okay, the learning principle. So for us to be curious about what the who the other person is, you can learn something about the other person. Learning fr something from the other person. Okay, no matter how how skilled we are, how qualified we are, or how experienced we are, we can always learn. Okay, now I remember. Having a conversation with uh, with one of our uh, one of our uh, colleagues. This is many years ago again. Um, so I and and he always had a lot of I don't know if I shared this, but he always had a lot of ideas, a lot of you know some of the things. Most of the things we could not actually not very practical. Right? So a lot of things and hey, we should do this, we should do that, and so I remember just uh, so I we, we used to. You know, have our office in Artinagar those days, and I remember he we both of us got into the car, and then we were about to come to another place, and then he said, "Hey, Jay, you know, uh, Jake, I think we need to," and uh, and I was just about to shut down, you know, shut down in the sense, shut him out completely. I, I was like, "Okay, I'm not," and the Holy Spirit spoke, you know, God spoke and said, "Just listen to him. Okay, don't don't do that. Don't shut him off. Listen to what he has to say," right? and. I remember the very clearly, right? I was like, okay, God, you know, I'll take notice of that. And he had some things, uh, he was really sharing his heart. And so it was it was good for me to hear that and learn something about, you know, what was what he was going through in life and, and all that, right? So the learning principle is we can learn something from others. In the sense, people can actually add something to our lives. Okay. Now, you know. Uh, we, we could have these kind of attitudes. You know, an, an arrogant attitude would be, no one can teach me anything. Okay, no one can teach me anything. I will, you know, if I want to learn, I will learn by myself from the sources that I go to. Right? So that's an arrogant attitude. No one can teach me anything. Second one is a naive or a very simplistic attitude, which me, which says or which thinks like this: 
everyone can teach me everything okay or oh, someone can teach me everything now that is also that is false right because no one has all the knowledge no one has all the experience and some might be strong in one area not so strong in another area so they can't teach us everything but the teachable attitude is this that everyone can teach me something a something you know some skill something that i can learn from uh from everyone okay so now that's a good attitude to have okay this person from this person okay at least something that i'm learning from their lives so if we if we have that perspective in relating to people right even the worst of people in the worst manner people like we can always find something good in them right um and learn something from them okay okay so this will help us right um so that's the learning principle okay the charisma principle is this that you know yes god has gifted us okay when we look at what is the word charis charisma mean yeah in in the you know that is the general definition right in the sense you have a strong personality where people look up to listen to people listen to you right so so you say this person is charismatic right but um the other 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 you know meaning or the biblical meaning that we see is the greek word charis means gift of grace right a grace gift of grace something that is given out of grace so so we see um, the the gifts of the spirit uh, they are gifts of grace right so that that word charis is used when paul writes about the gifts so we say okay so when you say a charismatic church this means that this fellowship of believers is open to the gifts of the spirit open to receiving open to moving and learning and the gifts of the spirit and so on so that's why we call it a, a charismatic like right? movement or charismatic church and so on right so anyway this so this charisma what that we're talking about again like what you said it's it's about personality it's about giftedness and so that people sit up and take notice and and um, give you that permission to speak into their their lives and so on right so so the thing is this and we need to understand that people don't care how much we know or how much we can you know add to their lives till they know that that they are being cared for or how much we care for them okay um again we're talking about environments like church or you know spiritual ministry or teams people don't care right people don't care how much we know or how skilled we are like they might say one or two times they might okay listen and say okay fine this person is skilled this is skilled qualified gifted and then they say okay so what after a time it just wears off okay fine right but then if they know that they are being cared for or you care for them then they will sit up and take notice right then your skills and abilities and learnings are actually making an impact right they know that okay i'm they are okay they are this is a genuine care this is out of a genuine care for my for my betterment or for my good right so if you are interested in people to bring something into their lives to do some bring some good into their lives then they are interested in receiving right otherwise uh, you know that interest might be there for some time but it just wears off okay so what are some practical things that we can do okay what are some practical things that we can do in our churches in our ministries and in generally with people what can we do become genuinely interested in other people so think ask yourself am i genuinely interested right in getting to know people am i curious about them or you know am am i am i just not i'm not not interested at all i don't care right um to become genuinely interested and this also helps those some of us who might be who might think okay i'm a very shy person right 
I don't talk much to people. I don't have anything to talk to people about. Uh, if you're, you know, if you're saying, okay, I'm a very introverted. Like even if you are thinking that this is who you, this is how you are, this will be helpful, right? When you are interested, and so you can ask questions and find out more about others, right? Become genuinely interested. The second thing is to smile. Okay, so what does a smile tell? Sorry, what? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, let's say negative. It's a natural smile, genuine smile. Okay, we are talking about a genuine smile, becoming genuinely interested in people. Genuine smile. What does it? What does it communicate? So I'm smiling at you. What does it tell you? No, no, suppose someone smiles at you. I smile at you. What does it communicate? It's communicating something, right? Yeah. Friendly. Then he's not angry, he's friendly. <laughs> Acceptance. Yeah. See, it's a it's a sign of it's a, it's a sign of openness. Right? A sign of openness. The thing is, there are certain cultures in the world, I forget which nation, uh, I think some European nation, probably Germany uh, or some other Scandinavian countries. I'm not very sure, sorry. So I'm not able to you know, make a comment. But if you smile, generally if you smile, it means you know, you're a weak person. Weak. So they won't smile back. So si smiling is seen as a sign of weakness in certain cultures right so which means they're very guarded closed all the time i'm not going to smile i'm going to be very serious all the time because smile means i'm opening up to you i'm making myself open vulnerable so i'm i'm going to be guarded closed all the time right because you know just just think if a person doesn't smile at all very serious then you will also be serious and you will also be thinking, you know, maybe this person is a is not approachable. This person is not open. Right? All these thoughts go through your mind, right? So, so you don't want to relate to that person. You'll think twice. Think thrice. Uh, can I go? Can I ask? Right? We'll think. Same way. We are we are learning about how to be other focused, how to relate to people, how to win with people. So. It helps when we genuinely smile. Okay. The other simple thing is remember the person's name. Okay. How many of you are good with names? Like when you meet a person and you just remember their name. <laughs> right. So it helps. Right. Um, and I've had some very embarrassing moments with some people whom I know very well and they come for prayer and then I start praying and I, I realize, oh man, I forgot their names. <laughs> and I'm praying like, no, please help this brother and please Lord bless this sister and, and because I know their names very well and, and at that moment it's just gone blank, you know. So the thing is when you hear your name and, 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 and I met a couple, you know, very elderly um, couple that actually that auntie passed away recently in their 70s. See, I met them when I was a bachelor when I came to Bangalore. Okay. Uh, that's when I met them. And uh, after I got married and my wife and I, we met them. They remember our names. It's not like we meet them every day. We, we would have, you know, suppose we meet them now. Maybe it's some meeting, we would have, Christian meeting, we would have met them, church meeting. Then maybe after a year, maybe after two years. And, and um, when I went for his wife's funeral service, I was meeting him after the pandemic, right? Some four years, five years. And he remembers my name. He just said, and he remembers what I do. He's introducing me to his daughter and he's saying, you know, this is Pastor So and so, and he, this is his wife's name, is this? Oh my God. And I'm wondering, God, <laughs> I need help, right? Maybe because we don't really make a you know, make an attempt right, to remember the names. Um, it's hard. It's difficult. It's very difficult because you meet. Yeah, it's important, but it's it's difficult, and it helps when we uh, 
you know when we make a lot of it and especially in bible college it's difficult right now i'm thinking okay first batch some of the names i know you know but then some names i you know we we forget uh, every year there's a new batch and and so on right so yeah next year i don't know if i'll know. <laughs> but yeah so the thing is to, to when we remember names when we relate to people with names it it actually helps it means that you are focused right what is the other one be a good listener okay so how many of you can say you're a good listener yeah so when the other person is speaking do you think about okay i need to study this i need to do that and then come back you know let the person finish right uh but we're just saying mm, mm, yeah 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 and then you know and uh right so be a good listener be a, i think we learned about listening right um was it no and it's in life skills class third year uh where you know how to be an active listener you know, not just hearing is hearing different from listening yeah what is hearing then uh okay yeah i'm sorry the mic is not uh, so so um yeah pass on the mic but anyway so so this is what it is you know hearing is um yeah hearing is when you when you receive the noise when you receive the sound and just keep it yeah hearing is when you receive the sound okay it's the act of where our physical organ here is receiving but listening is when you actually code it you actually make sense of it and you you know you respond to it right so so to be a active listener this is again is something maybe some of us may not have that skill you know we thinking about something sometimes we think about what should i answer now you know that person is saying something or we we are even thinking about okay let me answer this let me answer you know that is also not a good you know not being a good listener right you have a question yeah. just use the yeah so the, the question is what if people people keep on yeah people yeah so think like whatever they are telling is true or not mm. it goes out of the boundary yeah so we need to facilitate the conversation right people like recently i met someone who said you know i want have i want I have two things to tell you okay and then that person went on to say 10 things and uh, and then i lost track of you know beyond that uh, you know then uh, so you can then the person that you can pray for two things and well i said okay I went beyond two things and it didn't seem to be stopping so then i had to say okay okay let's let's pray now right let's pray you mention those things don't worry let's let's just pray so probably we just need to facilitate that right okay okay talks in talk in terms of the other person's interest you know we um you know we like to talk about ourselves so it's a it's a good subject right you it's a subject that you know about you're an expert in this right you're an expert on yourself um but talk in terms of the other person's interest to ask questions you know what are you interested in what are, what is what makes you you and so on right and um so that that helps to make the other person feel respected and you value their importance right um and and the thing is uh, people can find out whether it's fake or genuine you know when you're just asking questions for the sake of asking questions you know so um so yeah so so how are you doing you know this how are you doing is a you know how are things with you is, is such a you know very common and much abused uh, you know ask question right because we don't really want to know the answer and other person also knows they say how are you doing yeah all good all good and then it's, it's just a like um, you know certain cultures you know like when i came here to karnataka i realized that people ask um, uh, uh, you know nashta uh, aita uta aita you know so i'm asking why is he asking me this you know you're meeting that person and they say sir coffee aita you know it means have you had coffee and it's about 3 o'clock or something so it's just a, it's just a manner of speaking have you experienced that yeah you also maybe <laughs> done that you know 
utaita uh, so you have a conversation and then around as you're winding up or even beginning the conversation you ask about whether they've eaten anything whether they've had their lunch they had their breakfast and it's a it's a manner of speaking right and even you know things like how are you doing it's become like that so you know are you genuine in in asking you know the the questions you know um, i'm not saying you know like greetings like all well but then going beyond that certain things that we ask you know uh, how's your work um, you know how are you doing uh, so we might ask the questions and when the person is speaking we are looking somewhere you know we just nodding ah oh, okay and then we are looking behind and then uh, you know we waving at someone else so that shows that we are not sincere and that we are not genuine right okay so um so we're just saying that um, you know show people that you care and then they will be interested they will you will be able to relate to them better okay the number 10 principle okay see the thing is the that the number 10 is a perfect score in some of the sports like especially um in things like in sports like gymnastics and diving and so on um so the number 10 so this author is basically american um you know and some of these concepts have american culture in them so you know the number 10 principle it's it comes from that place where you know sports like diving perfect 10 is a is a perfect score like when it comes to diving when it comes to gymnastics so the number 10 principle so what is it number 10 is believe the best about people okay see there are two ways you can look at people right they are guilty until proven innocent okay? or innocent until proven guilty right so it means you look at them okay this guy is up to something i'm not going to trust him till he proves himself to be innocent or the other thing is you believe the best till they you know mess up or do something you know believe the best in people so this number 10 is believing the best of people esteeming others right honoring others so the so general human tendency is when you believe the best about people sincerely they will also respond with the their best in most cases okay if you trust you know i'm not saying that in all cases but in most cases right, if you trust i remember the first time i like joined church uh, as a staff as an administrator and i remember i think it was in that first week or something after the orientation and all that and and pastor ashish came and gave me the the debit card okay of the of the church say hey this is the card use it as in you know for the expenses and everything and and i literally was shaking you know this is the card is, those days we used to have one account and this is it so i need to be careful but also um you know the the kind of trust that was based on me so i i was like very careful i need to be very sure that i don't mess up right i need to be um with the with the money that's coming in with the money that's going out to make sure that i i do my best right in order to give my best right for the trust that is placed on me so when when you trust people they will bring out the best in them okay um so when it comes to number 10 principle you know don't write people off based on personal biases what are personal bi- what is a bias um a bias is um is a certain idea it's like a prejudice you know you a certain idea that you have about people it could be based on their ethnicity it could be based based on in the sense which place they come from right what language they speak what they do in life you know it could be you know when it comes to bias for people you know about people right so you have some personal biases based on your experience right like we sometimes you know it's 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 unfortunate but we we you know we we make a lot of jokes about you know about the sardar ji community right you say okay you know i'm sure you also made some jokes or you know heard some jokes and just to you know and the whole premise is what that 
they are not intelligent right but the fact is the truth is not that the truth is that they are very intelligent people very sharp very intelligent we had one prime minister right mr manmohan desai was a um, prime minister like so uh, sorry he was yeah he was also finance i think at one point um that whole opening up of the market right um came during that time and he was very instrumental in bringing that um opening up of the economy so we see that you know that's a bias right personal bias we could also have a personal bias about people from you know different regions and and we need to guard ourselves especially as believers as pastors where to our gathering if people from different if god would you know give that give us that influence place that places in that sphere of influence where multi lingual multi ethnic people come to a gathering let's say or god is using you to reach out we cannot afford to have these biases right and generally for a team to function well we cannot have these biases right um this is recently we were you know we were uh, we had a prayer time and then uh, we were all, we were all sitting and talking and prayer time after prayer time we went for a breakfast and we were sitting and talking and and somebody was saying something about i don't know it, it was actually a you know something they didn't do something deep within but it came out uh and they said uh, hey these north indians you know and something like that and i was like oh god no because i knew someone who was from the north who was sitting right there right and this person you know thankfully they didn't talk continue about this and then but i made a mental note of it you know that um we are sitting as you know people from brothers and sisters brothers from different places and we can't make such comments right we can't have such biases which lead to making such comments okay right okay any questions these are some practical things right um nothing very deep or anything but something that we need to put in practice you know so if we identify hey, i seem to have some biases like i personally had a bias about the west right uh maybe americans or people from you know i had a bias uh, about uh, about the spirituality about so, so and god really had to deal with it you know i had to deal with it and uh, you know put it aside right so things like that we might have certain biases but we need to deal with it and maybe god's plan involves you know so many meet you meeting different kinds of people you leading different kinds of people and until that is dealt with you cannot successfully relate right okay then the last one in this in this um, topic is the confrontation principle okay what does what does confront mean face them facing people in order to deal with the problem in order to correct in order to point out some mistake maybe um yeah so confrontation okay so conflict maybe there's a conflict okay maybe um you know okay, mismatch of interests or misunderstanding and leading to a conflict so there could be conflict and this you know john c maxwell talks about how he is doing workshops at different places and he asks okay you know in the and he's talking to leaders so he's saying that okay so uh, how many of you have conflicts in your team in your team in your organization in an organization so almost 95% put their hands up and said yeah, yeah we have conflicts so then he asks a second question you know, how many of you have confronted the person because of the conflict said only 5% put their hands up okay so conflicts everyone is aware everyone knows that is happening but in order to confront maybe the source of conflict maybe you know the person who is the source of conflict or uh or you know how to set right the conflict 
very few people indulge in that okay so when we are relating to people and we want to win with people this confrontation is necessary right is it a pleasant thing or an unpleasant thing <laughs> unpleasant right it's unpleasant because uh, you know yes maybe people get angry you get angry you know there's and so maybe words are spoken and all that so so then if we have had some bad confrontations in the past we we hesitate uh, i don't want to do this you know i know what he'll say i know what she'll say and uh, it'll drag out it's going to take some time and uh, you know emotionally i don't i'm not strong enough and then we say leave it right so this leaving it doesn't help at all <laughs> right because you leave it and then you come back to it and then you see that it's grown into one big monster that conflict that problem it's not gone right okay so um okay the, the we'll just look at this one statement care for people before confronting them okay we need to confront in order to set right in order to make sure the the mistake or the conflict is dealt with but do we care for the people for the person before we confront them okay something to think about um we'll continue this in the next class bye okay okay thank you god bless we'll see you next class